So the POLAR trial is a um, phase three trial. It's not a large phase three trial for obvious reason, because um, they had to screen over 3,000 patients to get into the number they have, which is uh, just under 150. It's a very unique study because for the first time, we're using a biomarker to direct treatment in patients with pancreatic cancer. It's a unique trial uh, in a sense that we're also testing the concept of maintenance treatment. So think of these two things, biomarker-driven, in, in other words, science-driven. And the second point to make is that we're looking at maintenance treatment. All of us know for maintenance treatment, patients who get induction chemotherapy with platinum-based treatment, for example, or Fernox, they, they can sustain all those side effects. And it would be nice to see whether in a select group of patients you can stop the treatments at four months and then put them on a single drug which will have side effects. Anything can give you side effect, but not to the magnitude of the combination treatment. And it's going to be easier on the patients when it's a pill. So again, biomarker driven, based on science. And the second thing is that it's a maintenance type of uh, treatment. So the trial was designed to look for, to select for patients who have number one germline mutation, either BICA1 or 2, and, and of those patients, those who are sensitive or responsive to platinum compounds. Why do we say that? Because historically we have known that patients who have BICA1 or 2 mutations, they are more sensitive to platinum compounds. So I want to take our patients who do not progress on platinum compounds, and we are going to randomize them to either Olaparib as a single agent, 300 milligram twice a day, or placebo, and follow them up. So that's a trial. And uh, the study was based on germline mutations. This is very important for the audience because a lot of people think that you can do either germline or you can do uh, somatic, the tumor itself. This is germline. Th this study was only in germline mutations, number one. Number two, it was only BRCA1 and 2, not other DNA repair uh, abnormalities. These are things to keep in mind. The study showed that the progression-free survival, which was the primary endpoint of the trial, was significantly improved by the use of the Olaparib versus placebo. Interestingly, both arms of the study, the survival was also prolonged compared to what we know about, this, about metastatic disease. However, the survival was not different between the placebo and the Olaparib arm, which is somewhat concerning to me because I would have liked to see a better survival. But there might be a number of reasons that would explain that. Part of it is like 15% or so of the patients who received the placebo, they also uh, crossed over to the Olaparib uh, arm, or they received Olaparib, not crossed over, but received Olaparib upon progression because it's a drug available in the market not for this indication, but for other indications. So this is the first trial that looks into biomarker-driven and is successful, and is the first trial that looks into a successful maintenance program for patients with pancreatic cancer. Now, it's great, but what's the percentage of patients who we see who fulfill uh, this type of study uh, group? Number one, BRCA1 and 2 mutations are rare, People say 5%, people say 10%. I think it depends which population in the Eastern uh, Coast, for example, where more Ashkenazi Jewish people live. That will be probably a bit more than where I practice, which is Midwest. So the, the, I think the real figure is between 5 to 10%, but closer to 5% if we look at the overall US population. So that's number one. Number two, not every patient who has BRCA1 or 2 will respond to it, but still it's worth testing for it. So for the practicing clinician, the key point here is that any newly diagnosed patient with pancreatic cancer should undergo genetic testing, looking for BRCA1 and 2 in addition to others. And that's an important part. In fact, the NCCN guidelines have been amended recently saying that any newly diagnosed pancreatic patient could be stage one or could be stage four, has to undergo genetic testing. And the reason for that is that you can have people who have BRCA1 or 2 mutation germline, 
yet have no family history of pancreatic yeah. cancer or other cancers that are related. Okay. So that's a very important practical point for, for the people to be aware of.